Hi guys, it is a gorgeous spring day here in Austin, Texas. I'm gonna be like Mr. Rogers and take my shoes off. Uh, it's March 22nd, 2012, and wow, so many things to rant about on such a beautiful day. It's hard to believe the planet's in the desperate state of affairs that it is in. But uh, you gotta love it while we got it embrace every day of it so uh okay let me let me put on my doomsday prophet prediction hat and guys it isn't that hard to be uh to be nostradamus here what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna look ahead a few weeks it is now march 22nd so coming up in june probably 10 or 12 weeks from now i can't even remember the exact date Let's go down to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where the United Nations will be holding their 20-year anniversary of the birth of Agenda 21. Uh, the United Nations and a bunch of these eco-fascist, eco-Nazis, whatever Alex Jones wants to call them, and I, <laughs> I'm one of them. You were talking, uh, you, were, you were listening to an eco-Nazi, and I'm proud of it. Uh, but also, I'm in this interesting position, guys, which apparently not many people are in. I am an eco-Nazi, but I'm also a conspiracy factist, not a conspiracy theorist. I, I, I look at the facts, and so I have, I, I have one foot, let's make it a bare foot. So all you trolls, it matter how many how many comments I get from these idiot trolls talking about my bare feet. I love my bare feet. I like to be bare ass out here if you want to know the truth, but I don't think you guys want to see that. Uh, it, it, anyway, I, I digress. These these. So I am a conspiracy theorist and an eco fascist so this, this this whole thing with the united nations and agenda 21 is, is put me in, in the unusual position of being able to look at both sides of agenda 21 uh and after studying uh, agenda 21 uh and waiting around for for 20 years for something to happen. We're now 12 years into the 21st century. I stick by my original statement of almost two years ago if you, on my single most despised video ever called Agenda 21 for Intelligent People. Uh, I stick by my uh, original contention that there are two major problems with Agenda 21. Uh, and that is, it was way too watered down to begin with. Back in 1992, uh, the original document uh, didn't go nearly far enough on what we need to do to save this planet. And going hand in hand with that is that it, it, it's been completely ignored for the past 20 years. Completely ignored. Uh, and mainly because the architects of Agenda 21 are like Maurice Strong is the main one. I got a whole rant about Maurice in here. Uh, are, 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 are the very people who would be uh, like put out of power if this thing, if, if, if it really happened, if they put it together. So Agenda 21 is a bizarre document. What we, you know, uh, the original 1992 meeting and the one coming up in a few weeks, the 20-year review of the progress of Agenda 21, I, you know, for the UN to hold a meeting on sustainable development planet-wide is akin to PETA holding a, a, a barbecue as a fundraiser. It's absurd. The United Nations is the single biggest globalist organization on this globe. One of the main ways, probably the, in many ways, the single most important element of a sustainable economy is a local 
economy, it gets fossil fuels out of the equation. Okay? Uh, so you cannot be a globalist and support sustainable living because sustainable living is dependent upon a non-global localized economy. So what the UN is doing with their, with their finger in this is, 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 is always been unclear to me. But uh, what they are not doing, and how many rants have I had about this, the UN and the rest of their cronies, the New World Order, the globalists, whatever you want, and what they, what they are not doing is, uh, is creating some sort of depopulation agenda. Good God, this is, this, this is where Alex Jones and I part company, as I have said. Uh, the, the globalist, if it weren't for the New World Order and the globalist, the population of this planet would not be anywhere near where it is for the simple reason that these globalists, the New World Order, the Maurice Strong himself, when you boil this down, they are a bunch of oil men, okay? They thrive on oil. Oil, they don't have blood pumping through their veins. They have oil. They have fossil fuels. I'll throw natural gas and uh, coal in there too. They, their blood is oil, their farts are natural gas, and their shit is coal. Okay, these guys live off of fossil fuels. It is fossil fuels. It is fossil fuels that have allowed the population of this planet to reach the absolutely unsustainable levels that it has. If, if the New World Order wants to have a depopulation agenda uh, through Agenda 21 or some other mechanism, all they need to do is cut off the fossil fuels. You cut the fossil fuels out of this equation and you will see this planet depopulate pretty damn quick. And the first people are going to depopulate are that the more dependent you are on fossil fuels in your own life, the more at risk you are of being depopulated when the oil runs out or when they decide to turn off the, the flow. The, the New World Order has nothing to gain from a depopulation agenda for the simple reason that dead people don't buy stuff. They don't use oil. They don't get credit cards. That's the other, the other twin horn of, uh, of this evil axis is the oil companies and the banksters that behind them. And of course, all the other multinational corporations and militaries and governments used to prop up these corporations, namely the oil companies and the banksters. Good God, it's not that hard when you boil it all down. There's not that many players in this game. They have nothing to gain through a depopulation agenda. Now, they do have a lot to gain by, by keeping people sick, all right, particularly big pharma. Big Pharma and, and, and the doctors, the AMA and all this stuff, there's a lot of money in, in keeping people sick, but dead people don't buy oil. So, this depopulation agenda crap that the, the, these New World Order people, it's, 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 it's conspiracy theorists. Uh, as I pointed out in my last Agenda 21, we do need a depopulation agenda. Uh, the depopulation agenda needs to be the number one agenda item on Agenda 21. Uh, there will be no Agenda 22 until we, we start getting our numbers down. And if you want to read my, listen to me blab on about that before all you trolls start putting in your comments about me wanting to murder, you know, good God, I, I just... I just can't stand the, the, the absolute ignoramuses out there who, uh, who won't study the, the numbers and the facts on the table. <clears throat> anyway, so my predictions, 
on Agenda 21, it, it will be a continuation of the last 20 years that the, 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 the document that they are creating, which I've read, is easy to find, the draft document for the, the upcoming one, okay? The 20-year review, it's a list of about a hundred and, I think there's 128 agenda items on this thing. Uh, never once does, it, does the word overpopulation mentioned anywhere in this new document. Never once will you see the word overpopulation and looking forward to the next 88 years of creating a sustainable planet. Uh, but read it, it, you know, it sounds good to me, but the, but the thing about it is, is going once again, uh, it is not nearly strong enough, mainly because it does not mention overpopulation and the need to address the single most serious environmental unsustainable issue on this planet is our numbers. Okay, then of course the other thing is, it, it is written by a bunch of globalists, as I mentioned, and doesn't say anything about, about getting back to local economies, particularly local food production that takes fossil fuels out of the equation of, uh, of food production. <clears throat> and uh, so that's my first, uh, first prediction. It's going to be, it, it, it's, it, well, it's, it's the same as the other two. It's going to be watered down. I read the document. It, it is too watered down. It's clearly too watered down. It's completely unenforceable. It says right there, this, this has no effect of law whatsoever. Doesn't have any effect of law. And, and the tiny little bit of effect that it does have, if, if any at all, will be completely ignored over the next 20 years, over the next 88 years, as our population continues to skyrocket, as this planet continues to, to suck every last ounce of fossil fuels out of it, uh, much to the delight of the New World Order globalists who make their money off of off of selling us addicts, fossil fuels. Some other predictions is, well, one thing, it's, it's, it's compared to 1992, my prediction is, it's not, it's, it's not going to be nearly as even paid attention to. There will be a little bit in the news about it, but compared to 1992, just the level of interest, the level of, of both media interest and the level of interest by, by heads of state. My guess is that there will be far fewer national level politicians even present in Rio. And I, I will be shocked if, if Obama shows up. He's going to send one of his lackeys. Uh, probably, I don't know, who will, he, who will he send in there? I guess the probably someone from Department of Interior is my guess. Obama's not going to show up uh, to this thing. I'll be shocked because he doesn't give a shit. Uh, because he knows that nobody else gives a shit. If, if you... You've been seeing this little thing on YouTube, this little, uh, this little poll they're taking about what is the single most important issue in the 2012 election, and there's like 15 choices. The one that has been at the bottom of the list is environmental issues. It's holding steady at 2% of respondents to this poll uh, consider the environment to be the most important issue uh, in this election. Once again, I'm going against the grain of 98% of the people uh, in this country and probably on this planet. People don't give a shit about the environment. They give a shit about you know what's on TV tonight and, and how they can buy a, a bigger car and a bigger house. They don't care about the environment. Uh, with all I can bitch about Obama, the man's not stupid. He's not going to waste his time down there in Rio at this sustainability thing. Yeah. And, and to have this thing, to have this thing in Brazil, uh, you know, my God, to have, to have an environmental sustainability meeting in Brazil. 
it's kind of like I said, pita having a barbecue. It's absurd, the, the ironic absurdity of this, the in-your-face hypocrisy of Brazil, one of per perhaps the single most unsustainable nation on this entire planet holding this meeting. You know, I don't know whether to laugh or to cry about it. Uh, Brazil's environmental record of sustainability is absolutely horrendous. You know, as goes Brazil, goes the rest of this planet. Anyway, enough of that. And so, uh, other predictions. Well, the, my other prediction is this. Is that the, the Alex Jones, David Icke gang, who, is, as, I, as I've put in other rants, I, uh, I agree 100% with 50% of what Alex Jones and David Icke say. They're great guys. They have done a, a great service to mankind by waking us the hell up about the rise of this police state and the banksters. Now, they need to be a little heavier on the, on the oil companies than they are. Uh, that's where they, they, that's where I diverge from Alex and David and them. I, I agree 100% what they say about the banksters and the police state and the erosion of our constitutional freedoms here in the, in America. But, uh, they're full of shit on the, uh, on the environment. They're, they're 180 degrees wrong and to label people like me, uh, Enviro Nazis or environmental fascists. Uh, so my prediction is that you're going to hear Alex Jones and David Icke out there in a few weeks reporting on uh, you know the, the depopulation agenda. All of this shit about it. Darren, Alex Jones is probably going to give this more attention and the alternative media than the mainstream press is going to give a shit. Alex Jones is going to call more attention to this meeting than, than any single uh, any single commentator in the, on this planet about the evils of this meeting uh, and, the, and the depopulation agenda of Agenda 21. Read the document. Read the document for yourself. Uh, you know what they're talking about drafting. Just go on the internet and put the, the draft statement of, of Rio plus twenty or whatever they're calling this thing down there. Now I did uh, read the document, and as I say, the word overpopulation is never in there. It's just this. It's just that I, I call it a bunch of warm fuzzy, a bunch of warm fuzzy stuff. To, uh, to make it sound like, you know, world leaders give a damn about the environment. World leaders do not give a shit about the environment of this planet any more than the voters do. It holds about 2% of their interest. And, and the main interest they have in environmental issues is, is how they are a hindrance a hindrance to them making money, to keeping themselves in power. And, and if they actually drafted Agenda 21, they would, they would commit globalist suicide. And so it is a bizarre document. But while I was on this website, and I got through it through, uh, I guess, these eco-fascists called uh, the, the Pachamama Alliance. Pachamama Alliance, this tiny little environmental organization. For the record, here are the environmental organizations that Hamlin Little Tail belongs to. Let's see, Sierra Club, World Wildlife Fund, uh, Rainforest Action Network, uh, Amazon Watch, Survival International, and the Pachamama Alliance, who I'm sure Alex Jones would, would call eco fascist but they agree with me that uh, that this thing is completely watered down and will be ignored. It's completely unenforceable. It says right up front it's unenforceable. Uh, but one thing they brought to my attention, and, and this is the one piece of good news. 
there there is there is one piece of good news coming out of out of this Rio Plus 20. What it does is all of these non-governmental, non-governmental environmental organizations from the Pachamama Alliance to the World Wildlife Fund, what it does is it gives them an opportunity to come together, network, and share information that has nothing to do with the United Nations. Are you following me here? Because because even there there's even a few of us in in environmental Nazis who do agree, who have a lot of problems with the United Nations hosting this thing. That the United Nations is, you know, they're a scary bunch of, you know, of evil bastards. What are they doing holding it? But as long as they are, the what it does in, in a completely separate arena and I mean literally in a completely separate arena because all these eco-nazis aren't going to be invited into the main hall where this is being discussed you, you know you have to be approved by the United Nations even to have your little your little booth in inside the main meeting hall but they're they're probably literally going to be in a separate arena but it does give people from the Pachamama Alliance to Amazon watch to World Wildlife Fund, uh, to the Sierra Club, a, you know, a, a place to meet, share information, and do some planning, some, some real planning for creating a sustainable future for this planet. So that is, that is one, uh, that, that's the one ray of hope out of this Agenda 21 revisited or the, the Rio Summit plus 20 or whatever they're calling this thing. I don't even know or care what they're calling this meeting. Uh, that's going to be ignored by 98% of the planet, if not 99% of the planet. And so I've pretty much uh, repeated everything I said in the or my original Agenda 21 for Intelligent People rant. For the simple reason that since I posted this, you know, I, I've gotten more hate mail from trolls over this one video. I finally just, just I finally just stopped the comments. I was sick and tired of hearing the from the idiocracy. If you love depopulation so much, you damn hippie, why don't you depopulate yourself? You know, this joke gets kind of old, guys. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it's kind of worn out. All right, this. Why don't you depopulate yourself if you if you believe in depopulation so much? And I, you know, after the hundredth time I heard, you know, it's just emblematic of the absolute unoriginality. These little Alex Jones. Oh, if Alex says it's true, it must be true. That do zero research. From the hundreds of comments I got on this thing, never. Never did one person offer one iota, one iota from the original document that Agenda 21 or the United Nations supports a depopulation agenda. They, they could not produce it for the fact it does not exist. It did not exist in the original document 20 years ago. It does not exist in the present day document because it is a figment of the conspiracy theorist, paranoid, fear-mongering imagination. That is why no one has ever been able to send me one word out of it. And, and if you're some troll ready to talk about my bare feet, my long hair, uh, save, save your save your damn little fingertips for somebody else because I need to approve any comments. This, as my hero, the Deuteron OK says, this site is not a debate forum for the idiocracy. All right, if you have 
some, uh, some concrete evidence from the original document or the new document that the New World Order is supporting a depopulation agenda through Agenda 21. You send it to me with quote marks around it, pulled from the document. I will confirm that you know what you're talking about and I will gladly, gladly publish your comments and I might even sit here and eat my hat. But no one's done it. For the simple reason it can't be done, that I've issued you the challenge. Uh, so anywho, I guess that closes my rant on uh, Agenda 21 plus 20 for Intelligent People Redux. Bye guys.